Good morning, students. It is Miss Brooke again. Um, I want to talk to you guys about what we are going to be doing next. Um, if you watched my last video, you know that we are going to start reading a book together as a class. The book that we're going to be reading is called Island of the Blue Dolphins. Um, you might have seen it on the bookshelf in the class or in the library before. Um, if you ha haven't, that's okay too. Um, but before we get started, I think it's really important that we talk about stories first. What is a story? Do we tell stories to each other? Have you told a story today? Um, and what are the pieces or the elements of a story? If you look at this screen here, you'll see eight green bubbles. And within each one of those bubbles is a word um, or a piece of a story. Um, we can read them together. We'll start here on the left-hand side. Um, the plot, the setting, the conflict, the character, the point of view, the theme, the style, and the tone. All right, so those are the eight things, eight pieces of a story that I want you to be thinking about. I'm going to tell you what each one of these words mean and how they apply to a story. So if you go to tell a family member or a friend a story today, I want you to be thinking about these things, okay? Because these are pieces of every story that we tell, okay? So before we get started, like I said, we are going to be reading this book together, reading it as a class. It is called Island of the Blue Dolphins. And it is actually based on a true story, okay? If you look down here on the cover of this book, you'll see a gold circle. That circle is an award. So this is an award-winning book. Like I mentioned in the last video, I think this is an amazing story that you guys will remember um, even beyond high school, okay? Like I said before, this is a story about a 12-year-old girl who's stranded on an island outside of the coast of California. So, of course, when this story takes place in the setting, um, it's long before California exists, okay? Um, but just geographically on a map, you want to be thinking um, about that side of the world, okay? Okay. Um, each week, we're going to read two or three chapters together, okay? So I'm going to post chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. I'm going to post those separately um, as pieces of paper inside Google Docs or Google Classroom. And you're just going to read through each one of those by yourself, and then we'll come back together and we'll talk about it. Um, if you are reading and you're not sure about a word, I would really like you to write that word down and then tell me. Uh, Miss Brooke, I came across this word while we were reading chapter one today and I don't know what it means. I'm not sure what it means. I googled it and I still don't understand. That's how we're going to discuss this story, okay? So don't go into the book thinking, that we're going to know everything or you don't feel overwhelmed or intimidated. That's part of discussing a book together. Okay. Um, and then after we read those chapters, we are going to answer some questions together. Okay. And those questions are actually going to be about these words that we're discussing in this presentation. All right. So the first word that I want you to think about is the word story. Um, as a child or a grandchild, a sister, a brother, um, an aunt or a niece or a nephew, no matter where you are in your family, you've probably been told a story before, about a time before you were alive. All right, so when you think about a story, you think about the telling of an event or an experience. Um, inside each story, we 
as listeners or storytellers are following a character or many characters through the story as they pursue something and they face obstacles. When you tell a story, um, there's often a challenge or something that the character must overcome, okay? So that's what a story is. A story can be fact or fiction, and it can even be a little bit of both, okay? Um, think about a romantic story, all right? Think about a time when you were romantically interested in dating someone, and your goal was maybe to date that person or get to know them a little bit better, maybe even just get their phone number so you can text them. And that story might be fact, it might be true, um, or it might be fiction. Maybe you never really tried to get their phone number, but you just thought about it and you come up with a story about how you tried to get that story. So that might be a little bit of romance and comedy all at the same time. It's a little bit of fact, a little bit of fiction. Um, if a family member is telling you a story, there may be mostly fact. It may be mostly true. Um, but there might be those little embellishments, those little things that aren't necessarily true. Okay? Um, we are all storytellers. That's the most important thing to remember. Um, as you continue to learn about what stories are, you'll see that they are as important to us as water and food and shelter, okay? It is important as humans to tell stories. Um, it's what gets us through the lives that we live, okay? That's how we connect with each other. It's how we build relationships. It's the stories that we tell, okay? What are your favorite stories? You know, music is a form of storytelling. If you have a favorite song or a favorite artist, the musician that I have here on the page is Khalid. He's one of my favorite artists. Um, each one of the songs that he sings is a story. Um, when you're listening to music, I want you to think about it as a story. Um, some of you I know really like anime. What are the stories being told? Whether you're watching it on TV, on Netflix, or you're listening to it, um, or if you're reading it in a book. What's the story being told, okay? Okay. So take a moment and think about some of the stories in your life right now. So the next word I want you to think about is setting, okay? You can say it with me out loud, setting. It's this word right up here in green. Now, the reason that I have a globe or a map of the world here on this slide is because setting is all about the physical location. Where is this story taking place? If we go back to some of our favorite stories, um, oftentimes superheroes like Spider-Man or Batman or any of the Marvel or DC characters take place in locations that look really similar to the locations that we live in right now, whether it's a densely popul populated metropolitan area, like a big city. Um, sometimes you see Spider-Man jumping on buildings um, that tells me that it's inside of a big city, kind of like New York City or Chicago or Los Angeles, right? So when you think about your favorite story or a book that you've read or um, music that you've listened to, where is it taking place? It doesn't always have to be a large location. You know, we talk about Khalid and his music. Sometimes it's just at his house or a friend's house. Right, But every story that we tell has a setting because it's a location. It is happening somewhere. 
all right? When did it take place? Sometimes we tell stories and we say, well, yesterday or last class period or during lunch. That is the time period. But sometimes stories go way further back, like the early 1900s or they go very far into the future, like 2050. Think about very futuristic times when certain technologies haven't been invented yet. Okay, so when and where did your favorite story take place? We also wanna think about the social and cultural conditions of the setting. Okay, so when we think about Spider-Man, the social and cultural conditions are very similar to those that we experience here in America. Okay, but if we're reading a story that takes place in Central America, are the social and cultural conditions the same as what we experience here in America? If we are reading a story or listening to a story about a time when there weren't any cars or no cell phones, are the social and cultural conditions the same as what we experience right now in 2020? If they're not the same, then what are they? Are the way people dress different? Um, are the way that people get to work different? Do people have jobs? Do people ride horses or walk by foot? Or do they take a hoverboard, like very futuristic? Think about those things when you're thinking about the setting, okay? Think about those things when you're thinking about a story. The next thing, the next term or word I want you to think about is character. Who is this story about? It's not always a person, is it? You know, when we think about anime, there are a lot of characters that are animals, but they have names and they can speak and they have personalities. That's a character, right? Sometimes it is a person. Sometimes if you are telling a story about yourself, who is the main character in that story? Is it you? Sometimes we watch stories on TV or we read about them and the character is an object. Now that seems kind of strange, doesn't it? But there is a movie that I watched when I was a child and it is about a toaster. If you're not sure what a toaster is, a toaster is um, a machine or a piece, an appliance in your kitchen that toasts or makes bread brown, right? Um, that story that I watched as a child, that toaster had a voice, it had a face, it had a name. How many stories um, do you watch or listen to or read where an object is a character? Okay, so we've got character. We've got setting. What's next? Think about your favorite story. Who is telling the story? Whose voice do you hear when you watch or read or listen to this story? Who is the story about? Are there more than one character? If we think about Spider-Man, is the story only about Spider-Man? Or is there a villain? Is there a bad guy? Is there a character that he is trying to capture and take down? That means that there's more than one character. But if you're telling a story about yourself, then you are telling the story and the story is about you and there might only be one character, okay? 
So we've got these two words. We're going to watch a video here really quickly. And I want you to think about who is this story about. Some of you might have seen this movie. Some of you might not have seen it. That's okay. But this is a story. I want you to think about where it is and who it's about. Who are the characters? What makes you different is what makes you Spider-Man. My name is Peter Parker. I'm pretty sure you know the rest. I saved the city, fell in love, then I saved the city again and again and again. Look, I'm a comic book, a serial, I did a Christmas album, and a so-so popsicle. But this isn't about me. Not anymore. Spider-Man swings in once a day, zip steps off in his little mask and answers to no one. I love you, Miles. Yeah, I know that. You gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I, I wanna hear it. Look at this one. Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you. That's a copy. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Miles Morales. So like I said, some of you might have seen Spider-Man before, but some of you might not have. And just in watching this video, who was the character? Were there more than one characters? What was the setting? Were they in America? All right. The next... Thing I would like you to think about as we can finish up this presentation is the story that we are going to be reading. I want you to read chapters one and two by Friday. And I want you to think about where does this story take place? Who is telling this story? Who are the characters? We know just by looking at the book that she's somewhere on an island, maybe, with a dog. And she is a character. Maybe the dog is a character. I want you to read and I want you to find out who these characters are and where they are. If you have any questions, as always, I want you to reach out to me.